coming up in September, which I'm going to play a video again on. Um, but we also want to encourage people to 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 test this out. Like, don't just believe myself and Mr. Akidele, you know, check it out, do your own research. But what we don't want people doing is waiting for somebody somewhere to take them to the promised land. We all have to um, enlist ourselves. And then the other thing I'm seeing as well is as we're marshalling and I say we're building an army, we also have to equip um, this army with the right resources, the right knowledge, right capacity to be able to do what needs to happen. So um, I'm going to play that promo video for the Inter-African Trade Fair um, that is going to happen in Kigali, Rwanda. Join Africa's largest trade and investment fair in Rwanda. Intra-African Trade Fair gives you access to more than 1,100 exhibitors, 10,000 visitors and buyers, and more than 5,000 conference delegates from more than 55 countries. Participate in trade and investment deals worth 40 billion US dollars as business and government come together to explore business and networking opportunities at the International Exhibition. Brought to you by the African Export Import Bank and their premium partners. The IATF 2021. Transforming Africa. Okay, I'm also looking forward to the next um, AFCFTA roundtable. In fact, that was one of the conversations I was having um, with my previous guests before, um, was the fact that we know we have to continue educating ourselves. We know we have to continue, um, you know, sensitizing ourselves and answering questions. For me personally, that's something I'm investing in. I'm investing in, in, in oh, this is like the how. This is not just talk because... When I moved into the space, I realized there was a lot of um, what I call unproductive engagement where a lot of people, and I don't know if you've seen that, where there are more people, there's a lot of noise around talk, but when you look at the numbers, yeah. the numbers don't reflect the talk. That's when you correct. think about, I have a first degree in math mathematics, so show me the numbers. The number says US does about 2% total trade with sub-Saharan African countries. So I tell people something is not working. Yeah. Something is not working. So how, how do you take people from just talking about trade? Because even now within the context of AFCFTA, you can see so much talk, right? You can see so much noise, you know, but then how do you, this, you know, determine who is actually doing what? <laughs> that, you know, who, who, I who is I think there's a couple of things. I think there's a couple of things we need to talk about. Uh, if you're saying two percent, two percent of the U.S. is doing trade with Africa. Uh, well, in terms of no, the volume of trade that um, the U.S. Trade. does with the rest of the world, right. only two percent of it is so, Sub-Saharan so, Africa. So, so, so there's a the, the, this can, so again, uh, a few things. One, uh, the way we look at Africa at the federal level is social justice, culture, uh, cultural. That's that's one problem. Um, or, or I always forget, excuse me, the third thing is uh, security. That's mm. the third thing we look at. Um, the other thing, the other problem is when you look at foreign policy makers in, in D.C. towards Africa, most of them are white. Mm. So where are the black foreign policy folks? <laughs> That's a conversation. That's a that's a very very important conversation. Sen very sensitive too. Very sensitive. The other thing is, where are your think tanks here mm -hmm. that direct policy, economic and foreign policy toward Africa okay. that look like you and I? Yeah. That's 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 because whoever controls that narrative is going to control the outcome, mm -hmm. and so we have to. Again, we have to start looking at Africa, start looking at countries in Africa as a resource, period. Whether it's Ghana or South Africa or Nigeria, Rwanda, we have to look at these nations as a resource that we can do business with and build relationships with that's going to impact our communities here in the U.S. Those conversations, I would like to have those, to be honest, I like having those conversations at the state and county and local levels of government. And the reason why I like having those conversations at that level is because I can touch my local representative. I could touch my city council person. I could touch my county commissioner. I could touch my state representative or state senator in these kind of conversations and get them to see the importance of how this is going to benefit their district long term. But there's so many moving parts that we need to put together. That is not funny as when it went to to increase that two percent. 
Mm -hmm. That 2% comes from us not being engaged. See, what the thing is, the thing we the thing we do is the thing we do is we 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 fly to places like DC and we sit in these conferences. <laughs> and we have all we we chicken and hard green beans and hard rolls, drink water. We exchange business cards. It's like yes, we, do. We, we cross our legs on the panel discussion. We have these nice panel discussions. We call it a brain trust. You know what I'm saying? We have all this stuff. Yes, we do. And 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 then we go home. Oh, yeah. And we and when we go home, well, how was such and such? Did you? Oh, it was so good. It was fantastic. It was so, it was fantastic. <laughs> Just fantastic. And, but and that's all. And, we, and that conversation stops there. Wow. If you recall, if you recall, when I was at uh, hosting Trade with Africa, the last thing I said to everybody is, "Don't let it stop here. Don't let it stop there." Yeah. Because yeah. because I because that's the problem. We come here. We we feel good. We have the ambiance of Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it feels good. You know, this whole African experience. Not understanding that that experience really is the catalyst to save your community. Yeah, and yeah. so we we have we have a lot of conversations, and we have a lot of dialogue around Africa, but when it comes to putting together a international plan in a city charter, mm. when it comes to putting together a international uh, plan or within a city ordinance or putting together a EB5 packet in a master plan of a city or creating a technology zone within an ordinance to attract international businesses who invest in a technology zone in that particular local community from the continent that may get some benefits. Those conversations we're not having. We're not having it. And it's incredible that because I'm so you and I, I'm so connected to what I call the game changers, the innovators. Yep. This is like in in who, who is who I mean, he's a friend of mine. He's he's been featured over and over and over again. He's a phone call away. This guy, through technology, right, right. attracted twenty four million dollars investment from Max Zuckerberg into Lagos. Yep. Right. Yep. So people are doing this. When you think about, um, you know, what's going on with M-Pesa. And Kenya, Kenya yep. is leading the world in financial in inclusion when it comes to yep. digital technology. Yep. Like these are the things, it's like people think this is the work ahead of us is we have to showcase the story. We have to make people understand that, you know, the past is the past, you know, Africa has its history. Yes. We, but for me as a futurist, we're charting the future and the That's future right. looks a whole lot different than the past. Absolutely. I mean, the future I see, <laughs> it, it looks different. We, we, you know, one of my members, one of my members in GABA, my global project specialist, she just recently did a, a, a hemp tech conference in Ghana. And the purpose of that conference, and I think she's getting ready to do another one next July uh, in Ghana. And the, the purpose of that particular conference was to demonstrate the uses of hemp in manufacturing. Mm. That's a tax base. Those are jobs. That's creativity. And it's, it can be, and it's also global because mm -hmm. you could do it there. You could do it here. You can do now when you talk about African continental free trade area. Now you could do, you could do, you could trade with you, nations could trade with one another based on these new industries, hemp tech. And, and, and you mentioned, um, you mentioned uh, Kenya with uh, financial technology, fintech, which is a, which is a billion dollar industry globally. These things, these are the things that are interconnecting from Africa to America, America to the Caribbean. We're in it, we're connecting the dots. Yes. But, but you know, we have to, in order to do that, we have to learn to get out of our comfort zones. Yes. Understanding, yes. understanding that real estate is a major player. Yes. Internationally, not just locally, internationally. Yeah. You control the land, you can do what you want. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, even along that line, um, you, you, people that follow the news know that, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, um, Shola and Ezra, um, leaders of Paystack, Stripe just acquired their company for, I think, yeah. was it 200 million? Something? Yeah, 200 million, yeah. You know, but their story, people don't realize that fast, you know, 
their story is one of Silicon Valley. There's a US Africa engagement in that, right? Where they right. went to Incubator and Y Combinator. They went through um, Y Combinator a couple of years ago and all of on and on. So what's going on is that people don't understand or people don't may not see the opportunity that when we talk about trade with Africa, at least when I talk about trade with Africa, it's a big umbrella that catches a whole lot of space from right. um, agriculture to technology um, to manufacturing to right. retail to supply chain to logistics. And over the next couple of weeks, I'll be bringing on, you, you'll, be, you'll be seeing the, the breadth of this. Um, we even have one of the, uh, uh, should I I say <laughs> the most knowledge one of the most knowledgeable experts when it comes to supply chain in the US because I worked um in that world before so I've brought him on he was like Tony what do you want me to say I was like you're going to tell me about um the complications when it comes to supply chain in America because what we are cracking and what we are solving for is linking even the supply chain back to Africa because today right. today you have ships going to a country like Nigeria and when they turn around and they're returning back to the U.S., most of them come back empty. Empty. 